Welcome everybody to another edition of the FIA Academy video newsletter. We're continuing our investigation this week into the ancient athletic virtue of valor. Hello, my beautiful people. It's great to see you in this digital format. As always, I hope you are doing well. Today is a bit of a fun one. I've got the, uh, the little man off onto the side in his little play center, so you might hear some toy sounds. You might hear some, brrr, you know, little, little, little man making his little happy sounds. Um, it's a family affair here uh, in, our, in our house, and we like to share that as much as possible. And when thinking about the virtue that we're going to discuss today, valor, right? What is valor? Valor is that courage. Valor is strength of mind, spirit, or character that, enable one, that enables one to encounter danger with firmness. And we've been talking about valor in the sense of physical pain or physical sacrifice. And I, um, you know, you guys all have the opportunity to go back and take a look at all those previous videos right in your email. You've got that link at the bottom that links you to the playlist where you get access to all of the previous uh, lessons. But I wanted to think about a particular element that relates back to the history and the founding of ancient athletics to the way we understand physical courage through sport today through the idea of playing through pain. And what I wanted to talk about today in terms of athletics and then we'll apply it to our lives is why do we honor those who play through pain? Like why do we celebrate the athletes who instead of taking a rest on the bench or sitting out like they, they put their pads back on, they get back out there with their equipment, and they grit through obvious pain, injury, sickness, illness, you name it. And these athletes become legends. And what I would love for you to consider as we go through these stories today, think about questions like why do we sacrifice our bodies? Right. We all make sacrifices. We all know uh, sacrifice is necessary. But what is it about the physical sacrifice? You know, we can talk about like sweat equity or weightlifters. Weightlifters like will have the calloused hands, right? And these become badges of honor. So we have to always think about why do we sacrifice our bodies? For what purposes and reasons? Because there are times when it is beneficial for us to push through a little bit of pain. So I want us to think about the noble qualities that come with pushing through. Because it, on the surface, doesn't seem like the correct moral stance. Like playing through injury, playing through pain, it's pretty stupid when you think about it. Like you're already injured, you're already hurt, you have the potential to do far greater damage to yourself and shouldn't we try to preserve our health at all costs right that's one of the elements of the balance between the body the mind and the spirit or the soul is that we're looking for holistic health between each of these areas of our being so why would we risk injuring the body well that's because through playing th by playing through pain, we ennoble the other two elements. And as we've, yeah, I know, buddy, I know. And as, <laughs> and as we've been talking about throughout this whole um, video series, it's the combination of all these three things that we want. Now, one of the best stories of any athlete playing through pain comes from my nemesis, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, so I'm not playing. I'm not playing favorites here. I know. Yeah, you heard the Toronto Maple Leafs, buddy, and you got angry. I know. See, family thing. One of the most famous stories in hockey history comes from the 1964 Stanley Cup final. Bobby Bond, a defenseman for the Toronto Maple Leafs, takes a slap shot to his foot, shattering his ankle. You can see in the picture below, right, him being taken off the ice on a stretcher. He goes back to the dressing room 
His foot is forced into the skate, basically. Um, actually, I don't even think they take the skate off. Like that's the that's the first thing. You don't take the skate off because you never get the never get the boot back in. Either way, he goes back to the dressing room. The game is tied. It goes into overtime. He's looking at himself in the mirror. <laughs> the game goes to overtime. Bobby Bond returns on a broken ankle, scores the game-winning goal. This ties the series at 3-3. Three to three. Toronto goes on to win Game 7, winning the Stanley Cup in 1964. And Bobby Bond is the hero. I mean, look at the man's face when he's holding the cup as opposed to the face when he's being carted off the ice. When we're trying to think about the noble qualities of playing through pain, I think the genuine triumph that you see on the face of Bob Bond in that picture on uh, the, that colorized picture of him in the cup, that's what the noble qualities of playing through pain are. It's the grit. It's the determination. It's the resiliency. And the reason why we praise these athletes who do it is because elite athletes are already extraordinary. They're already these extraordinary performers. They're already extraordinary when it comes to their physical abilities. But what separates even the legendary athletes from the athletes who we just forget about is their ability to do the things that the others don't want to do legends don't do the easy things and one of the misunderstandings of the role of the athlete in society is they're not supposed to be paragons of health they're the paragons of physical achievement so they have healthy looking bodies but what they do to those bodies in pursuit of their dreams and their achievements is to break them. Elite athletes retire broken, battered, bruised. I gotta pause. I had to pause because little man, little man wants to join. And I think he should join. We are talking about breaking bodies, right? Athletes are the exemplars of physical achievement. The body is their vehicle in order to aspire, in order to reach those goals, in order to reach those dreams. He's just so cute. And that's like what the Bobby Bond story tells us, right? Bobby Bond would gladly trade a functioning ankle <laughs> to win the Stanley Cup, and he proved it to us. It's that almost insanity of the athlete to trace chase their dreams when all of the obstacles in their way when all the signals are telling them to maybe go back and sit down not force yourself to play through that kind of pain and this really stretches back all the way to the very ideals of the ancient athletes that they were these exemplars of physical achievement and their willingness to sacrifice their bodies exuded their intellectual and moral capabilities. So rather than thinking that the body has to be in perfect health in order to display the kinds of character traits and virtues that we want to generate through this athletic exertion, through this athletic performance, through this athletic competition, We have to understand that along the way, we have to make physical sacrifices. Now, one of my favorite stories from the ancient athletic world shows us an athlete who's willing to make the ultimate sacrifice to achieve glory. And I talked about this story. I forget which, uh, I forget which, which lecture, but it's, it's such a great story that we should talk about it again. Arhishan. The Pancreationist who dies in the ring to preserve glory. He's a two-time Pancration champion. He's never lost a match at the Olympics. He's in his third Olympics. He's in the final match. 
And he's an athlete who's aspired towards an undefeated career and to be among one of the greats. That's his dream. Those are his goals. At one point in the match, he is being strangled to death. And he's about to, he's about to tap because if he doesn't, this isn't like MMA today, right? There's no referee or judge that's going to step in. Like if Arhishan doesn't want to tap, his opponent will kill him. So he's about to give up, but then he looks out into the crowd. He sees his trainer, and his trainer yells something to him. He yells, what a noble epitaph, he who was never defeated at Olympia, right? And so the epitaph is kind of like the phrase that sums up your life, right? It goes on your tombstone. So this is what Arhishan has dreamed about. This is the glory that he's been after his whole athletic career, and he's so close with kind of like his last gasp, his last breath, he ga grabs a hold of his opponent's toe, snaps it. Oh, I know, buddy, that hurts. Ow. Snaps the toe, breaking it. The opponent, he taps out. He says, that's too much, too much pain for me. At the exact same moment that the opponent taps out, Arhishan, he dies. Suffocated to death. So here we have this very awkward end of this final match at the Olympics where we've got one competitor who is dead and another competitor who has given up. What do you think the crowd and the judges do? They pick up the dead body of Arhishan, put the corpse on their shoulders, put the, the laurel wreath, which is the only trophy that you get for winning at the Olympics, on his head and proclaim him champion. Three-time undefeated Pancration champion at the Olympics. Arhishan dies to fulfill this dream. Now, clearly, <laughs> we don't need to go all the way, although we do know that there are athletes, particularly like extreme athletes, you know, the ones who jump off mountains in wingsuits, um, and, and those kinds of those kinds of athletes, they certainly risk death. But what the Arhitian story tells us is that the athlete must be able to make physical sacrifices. They must be able to endure injury, and they must understand that, that is a necessary part of their journey. So when we're trying to think about valor and the idea of playing through pain, we can think about it in a physical, in a mental, and in a, and in a spiritual way by just asking a broader question. What are you willing to endure, right, buddy? What are you willing to endure? You weren't willing to endure that play that playpen for very long or that play activity center, but you did a pretty good job. I had to endure trying to listen to you and do this. Didn't work, but here we are. And what that really says when we're talking about endurance and in terms of uncomfortable situations or painful situations, your ability to face those, to take some of the hits, but to keep on moving, well, boy, doesn't that say a lot about your character? So what does this all mean? When we try to think of the ideal of playing through pain, we have to broaden it out, right? When we're thinking about the inspiration of the athletes, think about this. There was a survey done a few years ago. They asked a whole host of Olympic athletes, if we could give you a drug that would guarantee you a gold medal in your, in your sport, but you would be dead within five years after taking the pill, would you do it? Guess how many athletes said they would? That's right, Izzy. 50%. 50% of Olympic athletes would trade how many decades of their lives? Three, four, five decades of their lives? for their glory of winning the Olympic gold medal. 
So we have far more Arhitians walking around today in terms of our elite athletes than we might even think. Now, we don't need to push to that extreme to understand why valor is a worthy virtue. Paying through pain, blah, 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 playing through pain, try to say that five times fast, playing through pain doesn't mean we have to injure ourselves as we're training our bodies. It means that we should understand that injury is part of it and that how we deal with that injury reveals our character. But we don't even have to think about it in terms of physical training, right? The ideal of athletic heroism and ancient athletic virtues, stand up your buddy, stand up, is that these are applicable to all areas of our life. So when you're thinking about playing through pain, maybe you had a long, rough day of work and you got to go home and now it's family time. Instead of you sitting on the couch and being all tired, why don't you bring the energy for another hour to your family? Grit through that tiredness and be the hero that your family wants. Intellectually, right, it's that challenging conversation. It's looking at that opinion that you don't want to. It's being willing to endure the pain of being wrong, asking for forgiveness, or changing your mind. When we're talking about moral strength, right, apologizing, listening, reconciling, forgiving, all of these leave us with some scars. They leave us with some injuries. We don't always get the restitution that we want. We don't always get the justice that we want. But are we able to walk forward? You know, a lot of people right now, they're dealing with issues around vaccines and mandates. And it's smashing our relationships. Just as one example. Or politics is smashing our relationships. You're on the left, can't be friends or, 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 or friendly with family who's on the right, or vice versa. Maybe we feel like we've been wrong. Maybe we feel like we can't really be genuine with that person because of the disagreements. But who does that really help? If you're not willing to swallow some of your pride take some of those injuries, well then, what are you going to be doing? Throwing away relationships? Throwing away future memories? Throwing away meaning and purpose? All for what? So you don't have to endure some injuries to your ego? It's not worth it. And I think that's the true, that's the true lesson, right, of valor. Look at this guy bouncing. What a man. That's what we need to think about in our lives. Like, what are we willing to endure? What are the injuries we're willing to move through in order to become the best versions of ourselves? And it's clearly understandable through the story of Bob Bond and Arhishan. But what I really want us to consider is how playing through pain is this very valuable ideal that can really help us get to where we want to be in our lives. All right. Thanks, everybody. Say bye-bye, Izzy. What a good man, huh? What a good man. See you guys in the next one. Love y'all.